everybody. Today we're going to be talking about air pressure and specifically working air pressure versus static air pressure. Now there's a big difference between the two of those and if you've never heard those terms before and you thought you just had to set the regulator on your compressor at a certain PSI depending on the tool you're using, I'm going to show you some really simple things you can do to bump up the performance of all your air tools. Now the main thing to keep in mind with any compressor or airline setup is you need to take into account pressure drops as well as restrictions that's going to hurt your airflow. Now what I want to show you is this half inch line has 90 psi of air in it right now, but it's on a 50 foot hose reel. So right now it does have 90 psi going into the tool, but it's not at load. When I pull the trigger, that's going to drop somewhere to around 70 psi. So we're having a tremendous pressure drop and what you need to do is take that into account whenever you use your air tools. Now if I was using a larger half inch impact like this Proto, it would have an even bigger drop. So you're even going to need to fine tune this between your tools to get maximum performance. But I'm going to show you exactly how you can test that air pressure. You'll be able to set everything correctly and you're going to be able to really get the maximum performance out of all your air tools. Now the reason that I'm making this video is I have a lot of different reviews coming up for pneumatic tools, especially air impacts. And I want you to understand right off the bat the compressor and airline setup that I have, as well as the methods that I'm using to test these. Now what I'll be doing in future videos is using recommended manufacturer specs as far as air pressure goes, and we'll be able to test exactly the performance that these are going to give you. But if you don't realize that, and you just put this, let's say, on your home compressor setup, you're not going to be able to match the results that I get unless you follow these simple steps. So here's the air compressor setup that I'm going to be using for this video as well as my future video reviews of air impact guns. And it's an 80 gallon Ingersoll Rand air compressor with a 5 horsepower motor and a 2 stage compressor. So air supply and air volume is not going to be any issues at all. That's going into an air regulator which then goes into an air filter and then that's going to go into a 50 foot air hose reel that has a half inch line. Now also the line that's connecting the air filter and the regulator is also going to be a half inch line and I'm using three eighth inch air fittings. That's going to give me the maximum amount of airflow. So as far as airflow and air volume, it's never going to be a problem with any of the testing. Now I also want to point out that, you know, we really want to keep in mind as far as this static air pressure and then the working air pressure. And that's going to be done directly by adjusting the regulator down here. And what I'll show you next is why that's so important. We have some ports right here on top of the filter. So what we'll do is test an air impact with those ports. And then we're going to put it through an additional 50 feet of hose to see if there's any difference with that. Now what we're looking for is pressure drops as well as the adjustments we have to make to bring it up to 90 PSI of working pressure so we can get accurate results in our testing. Okay, for the first test I'm going to be using an Ingersoll Rand 2235 half inch impact. And what I have is 90 PSI of static air pressure. So you can see the pressure gauge right here is plugged directly into the air filter. And then the lead hose is also plugged directly into the air filter, which is using a half inch line going into the air regulator. So there's really absolutely no air obstructions, but what you're going to see at this point is a big pressure drop when I pull the trigger. So this is static PSI. Now let's see what the working PSI is. The working PSI with this very short run is going in at roughly about 78. So we're having a 12 PSI difference between the static and working with just this setup. Okay, I removed the lines coming out of the air filter. There's one going directly into the hose reel, which is a 50 foot half inch hose. And then I have a separate fitting that is plugging into the pressure gauge as well as the impact. So in between the impact and the compressor at this point is roughly about 60 feet of half inch hose. Now all the air fittings are 3 8 inch fittings and it does have very good airflow. But what I want to show you is the pressure drop now that we added in all that extra air hose. So right now the static pressure is 90 psi, but when we have this at load, you can see it drops down to just over 60 psi, so roughly 63 psi. So in this case, if you had your regulator set at 90 psi, this gun is not going to perform nearly as well as it would if you set it correctly. So now let's go back 
we're going to set the pressure correctly so it's going to have 90 psi of working and you'll be able to see the difference in the static pressure when it's right at the tank as well as the end of the air hose. Hooking everything back up to the air filter, you can see I had to bump the pressure on the regulator up to 102 psi static pressure. So when I pull the trigger, we're getting that 90 psi working pressure, which is exactly what we're looking for. At the end of the air hose reel, which is going to be about 60 feet of line, I had to bump it up roughly to about 122 psi, which would be the static pressure. Now let's check the working pressure. So even though you may think it is putting out a lot more pressure than what you need, when it is at load, it is putting out that 90 psi, which is exactly what the manufacturer specifies for this impact. Okay, now to really give you a performance difference between using the correct PSI and the incorrect PSI. To start out, we're going to do it the wrong way. I have 90 PSI of static pressure at the end of the 50 foot air hose reel. And then there's about an additional 10 feet of hose in between the reel and the compressor. So it's about 60 feet of half inch line going through 3 eighth inch fittings. But if we were using smaller line, let's say a quarter inch line or 3 eighth inch line, with smaller quarter inch fittings, this pressure drop would be even more. So the impact that I'm going to use is a Mighty 7 impact. It's a compact half inch drive that's rated up to 700 foot pounds of reverse torque. And that's at 90 PSI working pressures. So to start out, we're going to tighten up this nut that's clamped down on the shop press to over 500 foot pounds of torque. And then we're going to come back and do the same exact test with the correct working pressure PSI. And you're going to be able to see the performance difference between the two. Okay, I just torqued it down to a little over 500 foot-pounds of torque. Let's see how long it takes the Mighty 7 to remove it. Okay, I guess it just flat out is not going to remove this at 500 foot-pounds because we're using the incorrect PSI. So I'm going to take this off of here now, use an Ingersoll Rand W7150 to pop this off, and then we're going to repeat that test. Okay, I bumped up the static pressure to roughly about 107 PSI, and when I pull it on the trigger, it's going to drop it down to about 90, which is exactly what we're looking for. Let's redo that same test to see the speed difference between the correct air pressure and then the incorrect pressure in the first test. So you can see I popped it up just over 500 foot-pounds. We're right at about 510 foot-pounds. Let's see how fast it can pop it off this time. Just a few seconds it was able to remove that and it was torqued down to over 500 foot-pounds. So now you've seen the difference between static air pressure and working air pressure. Now like I showed you, there are some simple upgrades you can do like upgrading the air fittings as well as the air hose to really bump up that performance. But the main thing you can do is to make sure that your working air pressure is set correctly to manufacturer specs. That way you're not going to damage your tools and you're going to be able to get maximum performance. Now the little setup that I had, I just made out of some fittings that I found at Lowe's and it really showed me exactly what the PSI going through the impact was, whether I was coming right out of the tank or I was at the end of this 50 foot hose. So there is a big difference between the two and always keep in mind those pressure drops as well as the restrictions like small fittings. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.